Welcome to BillyReynolds.com. This is where I share my own artwork as well as any other art-related topic that seems interesting. Here we'll be looking at the artwork of John Singer Sargent. I've always been fascinated by the mastery of his gestural brushstrokes. And this video allows me to research his life further for a deeper understanding of this prolific American artist who was born in and lived most of his life in Europe. His parents were American and were married in Pennsylvania. Then they immigrated to Europe. There are four key events to remember about Sargent. First, Sargent was born on January 12, 1856 in Florence, Italy. Second, the Paris Salon of 1884 where he showed this painting. Third, around 1906 is when he stopped regularly painting portrait commissions. And fourth, he died April 14, 1925 in London, England. Let's now take a closer look at his development and influences. Sargent showed interest in being an artist at a young age. This deer was drawn by him at just 16 years old, and it is quite impressive. In 1874, at 18 years of age, he was accepted into the Atelier, 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 Atelier. a private workshop or studio of a professional artist or designer, of Paris portraitist Emile Auguste Carolus Duran. Here is an example of Carolus Duran's work. In 1875, at 19 years old, you can see how masterful and accomplished he already is. In 1877, at 21 years old, Sargent exhibited his first painting at the Paris Salon. In 1879, at just 23 years old, he paints his teacher, Carolus Duran, which received honorable mention when it was shown at the Paris Salon in 1879. Also in 1879, he traveled to Madrid, Spain, where he copied paintings by Diego Velázquez at the Prado Museum. After his return from Spain, Sargent acquired several commission portraits, and now his painting career had begun. To quote Wikipedia, Wait, Wikipedia as the source? Here's the actual source, this book here. Here is the quote from Wikipedia, which references this book, John Singer Sargent, His Portrait by Stanley Olson, 1986. And here you can get it on Amazon hardcover for only $12.09, and the paperback is more. Well, that's interesting. So back to the quote. Quote, he immediately demonstrated the concentration and stamina that enabled him to paint with workmanlike steadiness for the next 25 years. In the early 1880s, Sargent regularly exhibited portraits at the salon, and these were mostly full-length portrayals of women, such as Madame Ramon Sabersasu, and he continued to receive critical notice. In 1880, at age 24, he visited Belgium and Holland, where he copied works by Franz Hals. In 1881, at age 25, he met James McNeil Whistler in Venice. At the Paris Salon in 1884, Sargent exhibited this painting of Madame Gautreau, which he would later title Madame X. This painting, yes, this painting, was so controversial that it led to Sargent relocating to London in 1886. This is the original version with the dress strap off the shoulder. Sargent later repainted the strap to look like this to reduce all of the negativity. From this one painting, his French commissions stopped. Before his final move to London, Sargent had already been sending his paintings for exhibition to the Royal Academy in London, such as this portrait of Dr. Pazzi at home in 1881, as well as this one more traditional Mrs. White. From these Royal Academy exhibitions, he was able to secure portrait commissions in London. In 1887, at 31 years old, he visited and worked with Monet in Gavigny, France, and made his first professional trip to America. It was in America that Sargent found sustained success. This portrait is the first American commission for Sargent within the States, and as a result, the trip would completely change his career and bring him the success that had been cut short in Paris and had been eluding him in London. In America, in 1890, he painted some 40 portraits in nine months. And even back in England, he's still being recognized, such as this amazing piece, Lady Agnew of Lacknaw, shown at the Royal Academy in 1893. Sargent was recognized by the establishment when, supported by Lord Leighton, he was elected an associate of the Royal Academy. His portraits kept gaining attention. His work has such an immediacy to it, such a freshness, and such dynamic compositions that they are so recognizable. He was in such demand that he was painting three sitters a day. 41 years old, he was elected an academician at National Academy of Design in New York and the Royal Academy of Art in London. By the turn of the century, he was approached by the aristocracy whose previous generations, painted by 
Godfrey Naylor, Peter Lely, Joshua Reynolds, Thomas Lawrence, and Van Dyck, next to whose portraits his own works would hang in some of Britain's grandest country houses. He created images of Edwardian nobility which have become definitive, like this piece here of Lord Riddlesdale, and this piece the young patrician Lord Dalhousie, an embodiment of the Jeunesse Doré. He seems to be at the peak of his artistic career right now, and it just seems so exciting. So does he continue on this path? No, he gives this all up and just wants to travel and paint landscapes. Around 1906, he abandoned portraiture and worked primarily in watercolor, a medium in which he was extraordinarily gifted. In the early 1900s, he spent the summer and autumn of each year painting landscapes in Switzerland, Italy, and Spain. He attempted to give up both the formal portraiture and the fashionable society that generated it. He returned to Venice, the city he loved above all others, year after year, but the portraiture never entirely stopped. He compromised by drawing charcoal portraits, which he referred to as mugs. He did between 20 and 30 a year. He spent two years in America from 1916 to 1918, painting landscapes of Florida and the Canadian Rockies and installing murals in the Boston Public Library. And he agreed to paint two famous Americans, John D. Rockefeller in 1917, where he would paint two portraits, and President Woodrow Wilson also in 1917. On his return to England, he accepted a commission to paint a major war picture entitled Gast. He traveled to the Western Front as an official war artist where he conceived his late masterpiece. I have always admired Sargent's mastery of capturing his subjects with such gestural freshness. And from creating this video, I'm now aware of so much more about him than I ever knew before. I hope you enjoyed watching this and learned something new as well.